Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. How great. God the three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb The Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me, how great is our God And all will see how great How great How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, welcome to another Wednesday Hello, night discussion. Hello, everybody. And uh, excuse me while I back up the PowerPoint here. We were going to do the song at the end, but we decided to do it at the beginning. Uh, we want to just uh, thank all of you for joining us and for being a part of our lives yes. in this crazy time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we are still just like everybody else. You know, we, we watch the news here and there and catch the updates and... Uh, Realizing that, you know, here in our, our part of the world, in eastern Kentucky, uh, they're saying that our peak has not even hit yet. That's right. right? I peak. think it's supposed to be this next week. Yeah, well, Dr. Uh, Foddy was saying tonight uh, on the update that uh, they're thinking maybe the 1st of May, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, before our, our peak, at least that's what, uh, that's what they're estimating, but uh, that's just... Anybody's guess. I mean, that's, that's an educated guess, but so we just keep you know. doing what we're doing. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, you know, uh, we're we're continuing uh, to wear masks when we go out, and at the hospital, we're we're wearing masks everywhere we go now. Uh, I understand we're going to be wearing them whenever we're out in the hall and in, in the common areas, and so we have been wearing them for for some time, uh, but they weren't requiring them in common places like the cafe and stuff but now i think that's of uh, tomorrow that changes and we'll be wearing them everywhere and that's just a another safety precaution mm -hmm. so. that they're doing uh, all that they do for to make sure the yep. patient's safety and you're uh and wearing masks when you go to that's shopping right. and when i go shopping it's so strange but we're all in this together right yes and it's working yes and so we're thankful for the human spirit and the work that everybody's done. That's right. So, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, we have a, uh, a lot, several questions to go through. And, you know, we started this new study. On Sunday, we actually did a sermon on it. And you, can, if you haven't watched it, you can still do that. 
And then tonight's discussion is going to be based upon the uh, the first chapter of Don't Give Up. You have that. That's the kind of the leader's guide right the there. The leader's guide. The book is yellow. Uh, the book is yellow. And, or you can uh, get it on Audible. Yeah, if you want to download it quick, you can download an Audible version. It's Kyle Ottoman reading it. And so I, I've been yeah. listening to it that while I jog and stuff. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, so you can get that right away. Uh, but tonight we have two special guests with us. They're uh, not in the room with us <laughs> for social distancing. But uh, we ask uh, who would volunteer to do our questions. And tonight we have Jennifer Lockhart, our neighbor yes. across the mm -hmm. street. And Michelle Pinion uh, are joining us tonight. I want to thank you guys for your awesome uh, responses and insights. And so we thought uh, that it would be easier for us to pick a, a couple people that uh, could give some responses because it's very hard to mm -hmm. get through it all with, with a whole bunch. Uh, but we also decided, uh, for those of you who are watching, feel free to share your responses thoughts. with each other. And yeah. we can always read them when we go back yes, later. And, and if yeah. you have a thought while we're going through this, yeah. just post it, it uh, as long as it's positive. It's a uh, wonderful <laughs> study. So I want to thank Jennifer and, and Michelle mm -hmm. uh, for your responses. So we'll start out with uh, the first set of questions uh, from the book. And Jennifer is going to be answering those. And just so you know. And then when we get to the more of the meditation part, uh, Michelle uh, volunteered to do those. And, uh, and so these questions are a little different than the ones we've been asking. They, they really call for some transparency. They're very deep. For some transparency and some uh, yeah. honesty. Bruce and I, I was sharing some with Bruce today, going through when I was doing my own study, and he was like, whoa. I was like, I know, I know. I'm yeah. having some trouble with some of these. So, uh, yes. Uh, deep thought. Very, very good. And so I thank uh, Jennifer and Michelle for being so transparent with us. It's not an easy thing to do, but hopefully uh, this will help someone else that's listening. So let's get started. Uh, so based upon the video, uh, I, I sent out the video link. I hope everybody watched it uh, with just a, what, 15-minute mm -hmm. video, Kyle Ottoman. And there was a short story in there from about a farmer named Tim. And so we'll be talking about that. So the video content and Hebrews 12. <coughs> Excuse me. According to Hebrews 11, 1 through 2, what is the definition of sin? And how would you put this in your own words? And so uh, Jennifer says, my definition of sin is any act that would disappoint God. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's true. And, and, you know, the Bible talks about missing the mark. Uh, when we miss the, the mark and we all have missed the mark, the Bible says all of sin to come short of the glory of God. So none of us can say uh, that we're perfect, right? We, we can't that's say. right. I mean, if we start picking out all the sins separately, we're going to be all in serious, yeah. serious trouble. Yeah. We have a so, tendency to do that, don't we? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, people do that all the time. Yeah. My sin's uh, not as bad as your sin. Yeah, we don't look at our own. We want to yeah. look at everybody else's. Oh, but I thought that, that was so good. Very simple, very you good. You disappoint God, it, does, it could be anything. And, by the way, jump in here anytime because I don't know uh, if you want to... Well, I was wondering, do, do we want to read that uh, particular passage? Or yes, if you, have it, if you have it handy there. This but... is 11, and we're reading... Find it. Yeah, the main text is chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, but okay. uh, we'll go back into uh, 11... This was uh, Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what's funny? Not funny, but interesting. I actually have big stars around this in my Bible. Okay. <laughs> so it, it's meant something to me uh, in the past. All right. So uh, Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Okay, that's about faith. I'm, I'm a little, I'm not sure how we got the definition of sin based on that. See, I yeah. had this, I had some difficulty with yeah. this today. But that so, was their question. That was in the book, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so, so my, yeah. And it so. wasn't my fault. <laughs> not this time. But... Uh, anyway, maybe it was supposed to be the definition of faith, but it said the definition of sin. It did. So uh, we'll go on with this, uh, <laughs> and and then uh, Hebrews See chapter. See, I had trouble today. Okay. Chapter twelve. <laughs> if you would read chapter twelve, uh, verse one and uh, two. Okay. All 
All right. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right, all right. And it's a wonderful verse. Uh, we kind of went over this uh, on Sunday about the the race that we're in, the, in the Christian race. So uh, based uh, upon the next uh, question here, uh, let's look at the witness of Abraham. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2 says, By faith Abraham, um, when he was called to go to a, a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. And then, so the question is, how did this turn out for Abraham? And what can we learn from this story? And Jennifer says, how did things turn out for Abraham? Well, just the way God intended. Mm -hmm. uh, but in God's timing, not Abraham's. To me, that is the toughest thing about faith, is God's timing and not mine. I kind of agree true. with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah. You know, and so you you just you just keep on praying, keep on doing good works, uh, serving, and, and and all things work for good. Yes. Those, those and you know what amazes me? This book is not very old, but it was written before the pandemic, um, and it's amazing how relevant it is to what we're going through now. It is. And, and isn't it? Keeping faith times of testing is is very hard mm -hmm. and like you say you know we we have to keep our eye on the prize you know we have to look down the road at jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and i talked about a race on sunday and we'll, we'll get more into that uh, but it is uh, looking ahead and not just at the present circumstances that's right and so uh hebrews 12 1 starts with therefore um the word therefore, how does this point us back to Hebrews 11? And then we talked about this mm -hmm. Sunday as well. And Jennifer says, having faith in what we don't see. Faith and trust have to work hand in hand. And to me, you can't have one without the other. And so uh, that's so true that when he says therefore, he's pointing back to the entire chapter. Of, some people call it the, uh, the hall of faith chapter. Mm -hmm. And all of these people who came before us and... They are our witnesses. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we Since are we to... we have faith... Yes. And we ought to continue run the race. to run the race. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how I took it, too. And, and it's really interesting to go back and read the whole, the whole chapter. And you, and you see all of those, you know, Enoch and yeah. Abraham and, you know, Abel. And just you go through every person that went through trials and they continued in faith. Yes. And they didn't have it easy. We talked about that Sunday, yeah. how that they, they struggled. They went yeah. through uh, lion's mouth and uh, lion's den and all kinds of things. But uh, they persevered. Trusted. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and if we're, we're moving kind of quick because we have a lot of questions to get through, but uh, hopefully uh, we won't go too fast on this. But in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, the author calls us to do four things. Okay. First of all, and you should be able to see it on the screen, let us throw off everything that hinders. And we talked about Sunday and, and uh, in the book, in the chapter, he talks about throwing off those things that would hinder us or hold us back. Uh, I think he calls it in the King James, the weight. And we talked about how runners would wear weights to prepare mm -hmm. and to get stronger. But when you run the race, you put that aside. Mm -hmm. So throw that off, everything that hinders. Throw off the sin that so e easily entangles us. Uh, we can get entangled in sin. If you're in a race, you don't want anything that's going to cause you to fall and to trip you up. Distract you. Yep. So get it, get rid of it. That's what he's saying. Get rid of those things. Number three, let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. So now he's talking about a long marathon. Running with perseverance. It's not like a... 40-yard dash. It's, 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 you're in it for the long haul. And uh, if you get in the Christian race thinking, well, you know, it's going to be a perfect world and, and I'm not going to have any problems, you're going to be disappointed, right? Because mm -hmm. that's just right. not the world we live in. 
That's right. But isn't it wonderful to go through those problems and have Jesus with you? And, and so it gives yes. you comfort and peace. And like you say, when you have Jesus and you have him as your focus, then that helps get you through those those tough times. And yes. great times, too. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and how... I can't imagine trying to go through something like this right now with the scary yes. things that are happening without knowing the Lord. Yeah. It would just be a tough yeah. thing, wouldn't it? What is it? The song Otis sings all the time. I'm a winner either way. That's right. Yeah. A winner either way. A winner either way. So uh, the, the last thing I think was, let us fix our eyes upon Jesus. And so he says, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, enduring the cross and despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of God. And he is saying that Jesus has already went before us. He's already won the battle. He's already finished the race. Mm-hmm. And we can see him at the finish line. He's our coach cheering us on with a grandstand of heaven as well. Amen. So uh, (laughs) what an exciting thing to know that we're not in this alone. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, that that can preach, can't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So so the question is, how are these four uh, phrases, or uh, yeah, phrases it should be, I think I misspelled that one, uh, connected? Give an example of how someone might do all four in the midst of a trial or a hardship. So uh, Jennifer said, for me, it would be like what I went through in the story from Tim in the video. I had to let go of anger and resentment and look forward and trust in God's plan. Needless to say, that was difficult, but worth it. And so sometimes we go through things in life, we can build up resentment, can't we? Mm -hmm. And uh, if we hold on to that, it it only hurts us. Yes, yeah, yeah. To let it go. Yeah, just Trust let it go. God. That's your favorite song, Let It Go. <laughs> but, I only uh, sing it because I have so many uh, young children <laughs> in our lives. Yeah, okay. I've heard, I've, <laughs> we love that song. We've heard it a few times. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Tim said in the video, Tim said he broke off the rear view mirror when he left Lake Dreamland and he never looked back. Can you think of a time when God called you back to somewhere you promised yourself you'd never return, as he did in Tim's story. Now, this question is for all of you. Think about that, and and uh, mm-hmm. you, know, you can respond or you don't have to, but I want you to think about a time when God called you back where you said, I'll never go back there, or I'll never do that. I would never teach kids, or I would I would never do this, and yet exactly what God has you doing. And, and so uh, Jennifer says, I can't remember a time God called me to look back, but I do know of a time when a friend told me, you can't drive forward while looking in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before. That's really good. Can't drive forward while looking in the rear view mirror. That that doesn't work work out too well. Right. So you have to look ahead, don't you? That's right. And and yet uh, there are those times where where God will call us back to... uh, to a place. I think of a time, you know, here and there, or maybe, you know, you've had some things that have hurt some relationships, you know, with friends or whatever, and you think, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm not going to go there. And then, you know, and then you pray about it, and the Lord gives you that opportunity to repair relationships, which is so wonderful to be yes. able to have that opportunity. Yes. And so, yeah, I can say that. As long you know, as... Uh, both parties are open and their hearts are open In to love. that. In love, yeah. 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 As a yeah. Christian, we're commanded to, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So. Kind of don't have a choice there. Uh, and I, I didn't finish uh, Jennifer's error, but she said, it is, saying that I refer, it is a saying I refer to often, especially when I'm letting guilt overwhelm me. So talking about um, looking ahead and, and not backward. And of course... We quoted this on Sunday that Paul said, I, I run the race, and he said, I look looking ahead, you know, not not looking behind me, but reaching forth unto the things which are before me. And mm-hmm. So there is some of that we have to do for sure. Uh, as Tim did, again, the video, when he initially moved back to Lake Dreamland, when in your life have you wondered, where is this going, God? How did you respond to not understanding how God would orchestrate everything together. 
And Jennifer says, to make a long story short, and I love this, uh, it, it's uh, several uh, sentences, but it's very good. So I wanted to, sh I want to thank her for sharing her heart with us. To make a long story short, after several years of being out of the work, out of the workforce and dealing with injury and depression, I got a part-time job that I thought was perfect. After a couple months, things didn't turn out the way I expected. I was let go and still don't know why, except God had a better plan and knew my mom would need me more. Mm. I didn't see it nor understand it. My heart was broken until later when I saw everything unfold. A few weeks later, I moved in with my mama to take care of her full time during the last few months uh, that she was with us. I don't regret a single second of being with her. Uh, she said a year after she passed, I was offered a job at the University of Pikeville that I love. Faith and trust in God is what I didn't have enough of at first, but definitely have now and remind myself of it daily. Mm. And so, yeah, wow. Uh, just a life experience story there. That uh, I love this because, you know, sometimes on Wednesday nights at church when it's just a few of us, sometimes people open up, but a lot of times we're too churchy. Mm -hmm. We're just too churchy, and we don't mm -hmm. want to, to open up and expose our lives to anyone else. We're so private. Mm -hmm. But when we open up and, and are vulnerable, not only does it help us, but I think it helps other people, don't you? Oh, yeah. When you share an experience with somebody that's going through the same thing, and you go, um, um, and that actually goes to what I was thinking of in terms of myself, sometimes the thing that holds me back um, along with sin is fear. Fear of, well, I'm just not good enough. Or, you know, they're so much better than I am. Maybe, yeah. maybe, you know, which for years in church, I always thought the ladies that were there, they were such much more holier than I. <laughs> and so it held me back from doing the things that I should do. Yeah. So fear. Yep. So, um, Thankful to have the confidence and to, uh, it's only through getting to be close to God that you have the confidence and have the long-term picture of knowing where you're going and you have the confidence to live your life. Yeah. Yeah, we have a, a tendency to look at people from a distance and think, well, they're perfect and live perfect lives. But if we, if we were to live with them for a little while, we'd realize mm -hmm. they're not yeah. perfect either. Yeah. And so we're all uh, human. Yeah. And that's okay. If some people even get bear spray all over them and spend five yeah. hours. <laughs> That's a story for another time. So. Okay. You have okay. to know there. Okay, now we're getting to the meditation and the application <clears throat> part. And uh, and so Michelle's going to help us out here. The original readers of Hebrews were discouraged believers. They were getting fatigued and losing heart in their faith. They were facing persecution and were tempted to give up. When in your spiritual life have you felt like this? In what ways do you resonate with this discouragement even now? And again, feel free to share uh, with us on, on the page or whatever if you want to share something. Maybe it'll help someone else. Yeah. But when in your spiritual life have you felt like this? And, and uh, when, what ways do you resonate with this discouragement even now? And Michelle says this. She said, a few times when my heart was broken, I thought I was uh, on the path that God had intended for me, but that wasn't the case. I was angry. I was so very sad. And I felt like God had taken my heart and ripped it right down the middle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God. It wasn't God's plan, only mine. Even now, when sometimes I feel so very alone, I feel like God has forgotten me and my prayers aren't going to be answered. But I have to stop and remember not give up and to wait. Very touching. That is very touching. Yeah. And I, I was touched when I when I read the, those words myself. We all go through those times, Michelle. You know, we've all been down on our knees and praying, and sometimes, you know, it doesn't get answered the way we feel like it should. Sometimes we don't know God's plans, and um, and sometimes it's just life. And because we live in a world that's filled with, with the sin-cursed world. Mm -hmm. But 
Well, when we have that comfort of at least having him to talk to and knowing that we have somewhere else to go. That's right. Amen. You know, it's kind of like when you and I got together, you know, I had been through some broken relationships and I I realized in my life that I had uh, I had messed up a lot and and every time I try to to fix something it, it just made it worse. Mm -hmm. um, I finally got to the place where I said, God, I, I I'm willing to to live the rest of my life single if that's what you want. I just want to serve you, and uh, and of course God brought us together and it's been almost eight years. Almost eight years. Uh, yeah. It's been a blessing. So. I'm thankful for uh, God takes broken people. And, you know, I know there's places where I uh, may not be able to uh, to share what I have in my heart. But I'm thankful that God takes broken people and does some wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that song, Something Beautiful, Something Good, you know, that God made with my life. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so thank God for bringing you into my life and mm -hmm. being a part of... Yes, yeah, so we're all broken, Michelle. And so... Um... I just, I want you to know, and I'm sure everybody out there feels the same way. We're yeah. all broken in some way, and we're all looking to God to help us get through it. Thank you for being so transparent, because there's all those times that we all get down, and if we're real honest, and we can look in the Bible and see those times for people as well. Uh, the question here is, when you think about encouragement, what comes to mind? Michelle says, the word encourage is defined as to inspire with courage spirit or confidence to stimulate by assistance or approval or to uh, I guess be promoted advanced or fostered I think true encouragement comes from the heart if we just go along with the crowd and say good job and don't really mean it then that's not true encouragement to encourage someone is to tell them to give it all they have whether they are running a race dealing with health issues or feeling down and out Give them the shoulder they need and really listen to their feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and sometimes, like she's mentioning, you don't want to just say, you know, it's okay. You you know, sometimes it may not be okay. And yeah. They have uh, things going on and, and, and you have to help them out with those things. Right. Truth uh, sometimes even to help them get through it. Yes, and, and it seems like uh, these days that that's needed a whole lot. Uh, in the past, as a chaplain, we did a lot of work with, you know, with the patients as natural, and we still do that. But we're also doing a lot of encouragement for the staff because everybody needs a little encouragement once in a while. And Especially right now. Yeah. 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 Well, and, you know, and I, I had an answer on that one, too, uh, of, of sharing in terms of the crowd of witnesses' encouragement and going forth. And... Um, Many years ago, um, our neighbors, uh, Sean and Emily Degler, that lived across the street, they had a young son who had a rare disease, um, and it, it eventually took his life at a very young age. And, um, you know, he was a beautiful child. I can remember him running around and trick-or-treating in his little cowboy outfit. Just sweet child. And, um, and they were Christians, and, uh, and I, you know, been a Christian, but I, I really at that time really wasn't, um, I, I sort of, I think I sort of felt lost there for a little while in terms of not connected. So, um, not long, um, after he passed and the night that he passed, many of their church members and us neighbors went outside and sang together. It was a beautiful moment. And I was so connected because as a mother of young boys, you know, it was heart, heartbreaking. And I couldn't imagine what she was feeling. And then when we went to the funeral, and we walked in, and the first song of praise, they stood up. The parents stood up in that front pew and raised their hands and were singing praises. And I just remember in that moment thinking, oh my goodness, look, their faith, what faith. And I thought to myself, in my, in my own heart, I want that. Mm -hmm. I want that. And so, and, I, and I've shared with her since how much that meant to me. It was a turning point for me. Yeah. So they were my crowd of witnesses and encouragement, and they didn't even know it. And they helped me get me back on the path towards um, just that one act in such 
pure heartache to have that faith. It yes. was just beautiful. Amen. Beautiful yeah. story. A good example of, of how we, you know, we can, uh, our, our lives can speak to other people mm -hmm. and, and we can preach without even using words. Mm -hmm. can we? And that's what I think of when I think of the crowd and witnesses. Yeah. And encouragement. And, you know, and I hope that I can be that to others yeah. Amen. as we go through. Amen. Um, next one says, think about a time, when, uh, think about when God has asked you to put trust in his plan. You persevered and did not give up. Tim persevered in his ministry at Lake Dreamland and saw the lives of many people transformed. What were some of the spiritual results you witnessed from your perseverance? Michelle says, a strong relationship with God and others and being able to speak out for God more than before. And so that's that's true, being yes. able to, to get more bold. Yes, that. it gives you that confidence of knowing, you know, what the end, you know, you've got Jesus in, on, uh, your eyes set on Jesus, then these little things don't matter. Amen. That's right. True. Uh, what do you think of the image of having hundreds of spiritual heroes cheering you on from heavenly grandstand? And we talked about this Sunday, you know, uh, whether it's figured or whatever, but just the idea, uh, you know, thinking having people in the stands. Uh, I know if you've ever played sports, what it means to have people cheering and, and to not have that, it's, it's a little harder. It's sort of like trying to preach with no crowd. No. Uh, it's been a little You've had to get used to that. Other you know, I don't have my amen crowd out there, uh, you know. Right, so, I try. But I guess by faith, I'm, I'm trying to look at you saying amen at right. home. Uh, but it's tough. Uh, so Michelle says, it's uplifting to think that such a cloud of witnesses are up there cheering me on. Let's me know that I'm not alone. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you, if you take a minute to think about it, and you know, sometimes you think about, you know, my mother and my father and my wonderful grandmother who, who shared her Christian faith with all of us. I mean, you just think about all those that went on before us. Yes. And, uh, are encouraging us up there. At least mm -hmm. I, you know, whether like you said, it's figuratively or not. Yeah, I like to think of it that yeah. way. Yeah, and you know, knowing that we're going home to meet to be with all of them. That's right, Thank Jesus you. and all Amen. the loved ones. Amen. So, if you could have courage poured into your life, what would happen? What and how would you live it if you had unlimited Christ-like courage and boldness? Michelle says probably would have more confidence within to sing, speak out for God more. And lend a hand to help others more. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful thought. And then this question. What are the things in your life that could be hindering your run of faith? What sin might be entangling you? Uh, she says the friend, the feeling of being unworthy or too busy. And so there's things that uh, are holding us back. And we all have things. And Michelle, thank you for being uh, honest with us. But we all have those things that yes. hold us back. Just like what I shared earlier, and Bruce and I talked about it today, and you know, we were talking about uh, as he grows in, in, as, into a teenager, into adulthood, how not to be afraid. Um, when you're doing the right thing for the right reason, um, don't be scared. Amen. Do it anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got that nudging sometimes so that they'll say, who are you? And you know, you're not that perfect what are you doing <laughs> so anyway if you just don't listen to that and let god right. stay in your heart just go forward right mm -hmm. hebrews 11 8 and 9 from these verses what would it look like to look forward to the eternal city that god has established for all his people and how does this eternal perspective affect the way you think about your current circumstances so true that if you if you can change your perspective and, to, and look at it from an eternal perspective, I think the Apostle Paul said that this light affliction, which we feel right now, it may seem like a great one, but it's compared to eternity, it's a light affliction, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So it's only a momentary thing in light of eternity, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about all of the pandemics that have happened in yes. the past and the yeah. world wars and the... Things that people struggled through, and and you know who are we to say why me, Lord? Exactly. I mean, why not me? It's, exactly. You know, suffering is everywhere. Michelle says this world is not my home. Sometimes, especially right now during our trying times, I think I'm ready, Lord. To, uh, I think I'm ready, Lord. Take me home. Hmm. 
All the negative, mean, and hateful people just really makes me homesick even more. I want to be around people that are happy and encouraging. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, uh, again, and uh, I want to thank Michelle and Jennifer for giving us these very heartfelt and honest answers. And I, I can't thank you enough uh, because they've touched me and I know they've touched other people yeah, out there uh, by sharing what you really feel. And God already knows how we feel anyway, so we might as well be open about it. But thank you. And uh, and so we want to close uh, with a word of prayer. Did you have anything else? Uh, I, I was uh, just going to say how much I enjoyed um, this particular uh, verses in terms of giving us hope and, and helping us to give us encouragement. Amen. As a I really enjoyed it. Amen. And I really enjoyed the video and... Um, so, yes, you want and, to share that again? And we are, we, are, uh, we are going to be doing a, a Zoom uh, meeting here for a few of you that have uh, got the information. I've sent some emails, but anybody's mm -hmm. welcome to join us. So we're going to try this and see if it works or whatever uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, give us just a minute to switch over. So was there something else you nope. said? Nope. Okay. Nope. All we'll right, see you all Sunday at 11, right? Let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We pray you bless everyone, Lord, who's out there listening and watching. God, we pray your hand of protection and blessing. We pray for our uh, medical professionals, for our scientists and researchers, God, that they could find a cure. But until then, God, we walk uh, knowing, God, that we're not alone. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you today. And uh, may his face shine upon you and give you peace. Until we meet again. Good night.